Hello there and good morning. Welcome to Dawn of Faith, Brand Boyd, day four in Exodus. Now, so far we've seen the journey of oppression, of pain, of tyranny. There's a lot we can share on just the idea of Egypt. But I want us to go out of Egypt now. So you probably know the story, maybe you don't, it's okay. But God will do some 10 miracles called the 10 plagues, afflicting the Egyptians thoroughly. The last one will be the death of their firstborns. It's it's, it's a strange story. Um, Maybe on a different day we'll discuss that in depth. But then the thing is, eventually Egypt allows Israel to leave. You can imagine the joy. You've been in a place for 200 and something years, you know, treated as slaves, creating wealth for them, your men being killed, your women being preserved. That's what every, every... tyrant does, you know, destroys the men and elevates the women, knowing that he will, by doing that, he will destroy both the men and the women. Anyway, the next thing that happens is that they leave, then they arrive at the Red Sea. And God could have taken them through another route, you know, through the wilderness up to Saudi Arabia, but God is like, I'll take them through the shorter route. But the shorter route will include a Red Sea. And so God passes them through the waters, and that's Water is always a symbol in in Christianity and in many religions and cultures. It's a symbol of cleansing. God is basically saying, I want to cleanse you out of Egypt to a new experience. Because tyranny destroys both the slave and the slaver, you know. So even in Egypt, the tyrant and the slave are affected by Egyptianism. So God cleanses them. God desires to cleanse them, that they come out of Egypt and Egypt comes out of them. But then you might, you know, they, they are probably rejoicing. It's, it's, you know, Egypt is all behind us. There's no more pain. There's no more, um, you know, there's no more gender-based violence in my home. There's no more betrayal by my friends. You know, there's, there's no more of all of this. There's, I'm out of Egypt and they are waiting to see land flowing with milk and honey. But what do they see? Wilderness. Wilderness. For 40 years, wilderness. You see, that's the journey of healing and restoration. It doesn't bring you out of Egypt into the promised land. The promised land is a land of promise. Promise. It's the promise that takes you through your wilderness experience. You know, and I don't know what's your journey at the moment, but you know what happened when they're in the wilderness? They cried to uh, to Moses and they told Moses, in Egypt, at least there were cucumbers. Think about it. They were building palaces and temples and pyramids, but now in the wilderness, what are they crying for? Cucumbers. You might think to laugh at them, but haven't you been there? You broke up with a narcissist, but then... Six months of being single and they're already missing the chocolate and flowers, you know. Because that's how healing feels like. Sometimes you miss the good times that you experienced while in Egypt. That's how narcissism works. It's a system of oppression that gives you chocolate and flowers to keep you there. Whether that's a marriage or it's a workplace or it's a friendship. So, friends... My message this morning is simple. As I've been calling you out of Egypt, it is not straight into the will, into the promised land. It's into the wilderness. But when you are there and you start missing the cucumbers, remember, you are building temples for free. May that give you the courage to pursue a healing journey. God bless you.